The boys are back, back at the hideaway. Jack is out of town, unfortunately, but you got us two boys here. <laughs> Rosie, how are we feeling today? We're feeling good. This is the earliest we've ever walked into a poker room. The light is still out. It's yeah, around. guys, we're not DJs. It's light outside, okay? You know, it's we, light outside. We want to make the most of our Friday night, so we thought let's get a little Friday afternoon session. Win um, some money and then go spin it all at the club, all right? But we don't club because it's a pandemic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cut that out. All right. All right, we're going to cut that out and we'll catch you guys in the band. Wish luck, baby. <laughs> let's go. Before we get into it, guys, just another reminder. NextGenPokerShop.com. Great merch. Supports the channel, supports us, allows us to punt off more money. Be like Diego, be like Kevin, be like Max. These guys are the homies. Send us a picture of you wearing the merch, you get to be like them. Shout out to you guys. Now, let's get into it. All right, guys, first hand for me, there's a limp. I raise it to 12 on the button with pocket tens. We see a call from a maniac, big blind, and the limper. Three ways to a flop of seven, five, jack, two hearts. It checks to me and I elect to see bet for $15. Probably should be sizing up because it's multi-way. Um, nevertheless, both players make the call. We are off to a turn, not feeling super confident. The turn is a black nine. So we pick up a gut shot straight draw, checks to me again, and I don't necessarily think that I have the best hand enough of the time here to keep betting. I think one of them could have a jack. Being multi-way, I think it's way more likely. So I check it back. The river, however, is another jack, and it's a blackjack. Um, so it pairs the board, and now it makes it way less likely that someone has a jack. It checks to the limper, who bets $40, and with the hearts missing, I'm kind of just going to shrug and call here, guys, with the jack pairing as well. I do so. Big blind folds. I just got two pairs. So do I. You got me beat. I got tens. And you're good. Two calls. Thank you. It's a little two pair versus two pair, but my pocket tens two pairs, pretty tough to beat in that case. We take this one down and are off to a good start to begin the session. This hand, we look down at a premium, ace king. Under the gun calls $2. Rosie bumped up to $12. Not a good thing, Rosie. I got the church ace king off suit. Cut off and the button make the call, so I definitely don't wanna just make a call. I re-raised $55. Sorry, Rosie. Now, after the under the gun player folds, Rosie folds, and the cutoff folds, it's back to the bun who makes a call. Now, the bun goes by the nickname of Prosper Donkey. He's a loose player. I think he can be calling really wide preflops, so I decide to actually continue here, repping the story of aces, kings, or queens, as I would be three betting those 100% of the time, so I bet $45. It's a rainbow board, so I don't feel like I have to bet that big. And he snapped me for 45. So we're off to a turn card, which is the nine. Not a great card for our actual range. And we don't have an ace or king of diamonds, so we don't block any flush draws. So I am totally, totally okay with someone checking here, giving up on the hand. But I actually decide to go add some pressure. Also guys, if you're enjoying these alternate camera angles only found on Next Gym Poker, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. Now back to the hand. I think that a small bet here is actually totally fine because the flop was super dry. Against a different type of player, I think this bet folds out pocket 10s, pocket jacks, pocket 7s. So I go for it here and he jams it right back into my face. <laughs> um, 160 more and all I could do now is snap fold. He caught me. Um, he shows a 9 and asks me if I want to see the other card. Obviously I want to see it. There. Looking back against a specific player, definitely should check the turn. We got a little uh, mid-session update here, boys. Um, a little discouraged as I've raised with Ace King, $55. $50 got jammed on, had to fold. Raised with Pocket Jacks, was jammed on, had to fold. Bet with Kings, got jammed on, had to fold. And then the ace king hand again, I uh, lost about another $200. So yeah, I mean, I'm playing the premiums, still waiting to win a hand, and the cards are not running my way. So we're gonna sit back down, um, pray for some luck, and hopefully we'll win some back. What up boys, it's Jello here. As you know, unfortunately I could not make it to this session. Uh, I was going out on a Saturday night like a normal college kid, but Rosie and Frank are freaking poker nerds sometimes and decided to 
hit the felt. However, I did get a pretty cool hand for you guys and I figured you guys would like it. This is from a few sessions ago, so please enjoy right here. What's up guys, we're back playing Big O again, which is again five card Omaha High. Uh, we look at down at a hand that I think is pretty good, but I'm under the gun. I just limp. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, cut off limps, button limps, small blind and big blind call as well, so we go to flop five ways. Pretty interesting flop. It goes queen, jack, just wait for it, another queen. What the hell is going on? We just flop quads and a second bow. I don't even know what to do here. The small blind checks and the big blind checks as well. I decided to check it as well, hoping to induce a bet. The cutoff checks and to my delight, the button bets pot, $25. Small blind, big blind fold to me. And I just decided to make a call. I've got this board way too locked down to raise it. I don't even know what anyone could be raising with here. And we see a call from the cutoff as well. So we go to a turn three ways, which is the eight of clubs. I check again. Hoping to see another bet. The cutoff checks. And wow, we're loving this because the button fires for $100. Let's go. $100 bet from the button. I've only got about $170 behind here. So I just decided to get it all in right here. You'll see Rosie's angle. He was actually the big blind in this situation. I had 165, excuse me. And um, we see a fold from the cutoff. And the button at this point is just priced in to call. So he calls. And wow, we're sitting there. We flip over the queens. And yeah, quads are good, just as we thought. See a dud river, and uh, I flip over my, the rest of my hand just to show how I just flopped the world right there. That was that was a fun hand right there. Not very often do you flop quads, but you do if you're a luck box like me. I just I'm not filming. I'm embarrassed to inform you guys that this is not a poker hand. We are playing game of regret. Here's how it works: you get four cards. You're going to discard one face up before the turn, discard one face up before the river, and you're down to normal two card hold'em by the river. So it's basically poker, you start with two extra. We got ace nine, ten eight, ace nine is suited. I don't care, I don't play these hands, I'm folding. Limps to me, and I actually am on the big blind, so folding is not allowed unless I want to really look bad. So I just check, and the flop comes ace six deuce with two clubs, so it's a pretty dope board. But I'm still not trying to play this hand. I check. It checks to the under the gun plus one guy who is a nut, as described earlier. This was a guy who wanted to make the vlog, was playing very aggressive, specifically against me and Frankie. He bets $20, folds around to me. I'm going to call here, guys. I mean, it's I have a good hand, right? And under the gun calls as well. I give up my eight. So now we have ace, nine, and ten. Obviously trying to hit that flush. The turn, however, is a pretty good card. That's not a flush. It's another ace, the ace of hearts. Again, I am going to play this pretty passively because I don't really know what's going on. I check, and it checks to the under the gun plus one nut who goes $35 this time. And I think this is just a call again, right? I, I mean, I don't know. I can't really justify any of this, to be honest. I shouldn't be in the hands. But I call, and I'm going to give up the ten. So now we got our trips, and we're going for the nut flush. The river is the seven of clubs baby bingo i mean come on let's do this thing again i still don't know what's going on really so i'm gonna check let's just get the showdown um it's not what happens the guy bets 125 which is a pretty sizable bet um close to full pot now that we're here and we got exactly what we've wanted we're just gonna call right i, I call yeah that's what i thought <laughs> No, he has a six for a boat. In the moment, I'm like, oh, I'm so unlucky. But let's let's rewind here and see what actually went down. Let's see if there were any context clues we could have picked up on. Yeah. How's that for service? Both of the cards that he discarded were clubs, meaning he was blatantly admitting to me that he wasn't going for a flush. He was betting all three streets. He had a made hand. So what could he have? Yeah, he could have a boat. Um, if I knew how to play the game, I would have paid attention to what the other opponents were discarding, and I paid the price for it. Oh, and, and now we're gonna pout. We're gonna pout like a baby. Nice. Here we look down at King Queen of Hearts. In the small blind, we see an under the gun limp to $2, and the Prosper Donkey bumps it up to 15 Now, um, I like all of our options except folding. 
as he's a very aggressive player, so he'll be opening up pretty wide. So instead of just calling, which I'm fine with, I actually decided to bump it up out of position, and I raise it to $45. Um, I think that my sizing can be increased, but he's going to be calling so wide, I'm actually pretty fine with the 3x sizing. And unsurprisingly, he does make the call to $45. So going to a flop already inflated, and finally, let's go. Queen, 5, 2, 2 hearts. Now we're getting something going here. Flop and top pair and a flush draw, I decide to actually size down, as I have the board just so locked up. So I size down to $35, and he snap calls me. Puts his chips in the middle, and we are going to a turn card pretty confident in our hand. Um, it's hard to say exactly what he has when he snap calls, but we'll wait and see and assess a turn card, which is a pretty safe card, the eight of spades. Now there's two flush draws. I want him to still call with his small pocket pairs and maybe other weak holdings. Um, so I'm not going to just size up expecting him to have a backdoor spade draw. So I bet just around half pot, I bet $85. As I announce the bet, I can't even get my chips in the middle before he makes the call. Absolutely no clue what he can be snap calling here with. I don't think it's ever going to be strength because he's not even thinking about raising. Putting him on a hard draw or spades draw as that's what a snap call usually indicates. It usually indicates that you're drawing. So we go to river card, which is the six of spades. Not a great card as the backdoor flush draw gets there. And before I can actually make a decision. You bet. I got the ace of spades. After he announces that he has the ace of spades, I am confused as shit. Um, I make the check here, and he actually snap checks back, thankfully. If he ended up jamming, I have no idea what I would do. Thankfully, it doesn't come to that. He shows ace king off. So we end up out flopping him here, and he calls very wide on the flop, and a very loose call on the turn. Thanks to the loose call from the button, I'm finally back in the black. This hand, we look down at pocket kings. Under the gun, plus one. There is a straddle. I raise it to 15. Our friend, who is trying to make the vlog, calls again. And the small blind calls as well. So we are going three ways to a flop, which comes nine, six, five, rainbow. The small blind checks, I elect to see bet for $20 into a pot of 51 on a very dry board. And both players make the call. The turn is the three of clubs. It is the second club on board. Um, small blind checks, and this is where I think I make a very crucial mistake and I check behind. I think this is definitely a spot to double barrel. Um, I don't necessarily remember my logic. This is a session that we filmed uh, a while ago, a little over a month ago, and just looking over the notes on the hand, I don't really understand why we're checking here on plenty of draws to get value from. So yeah, this is definitely a bet. Um, it checks around. The river's the eight of hearts, so now puts a four liner to a straight, and the small blind leads out for 60. So we're kind of in a tough spot here, but I mean, we did this to ourselves. So I end up shrugging and making the call. Middle position folds, he flips over pocket sevens. So um, definitely think that a turn bet would get sevens out of the hand, which is exactly what we want, or just charge them to hit their gutter. Uh, we learned a lesson, and yeah, um, this is it's a month later that I'm doing this hand, guys, and I apologize. I think it was not played well, and I'm going to try to be better. Here we look down at pocket fives in middle position. Under the gun, on the gun, plus one limps to $2. Nothing to do here besides limp and look for a set. The hijack winks the call behind me, but then the button raises up to $12. Prosper Donkey calls for 12 I'm obviously not going to go anywhere. Um, and then the hijack makes the call as well. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes 4-8-2 rainbow. Actually, not too bad a card. I'm definitely fine check calling here. Um, but the action ends up checking through. So we go to a turn card, which is the Ace of Hearts. Not a great one for us. So I'm obviously going to be checking here. And the button decides to fire for $25 on this card. Now, I will be folding here a lot of the time. But here in this spot, I see the hijack actually already mucking his hand. So I know for sure the person behind me in the hijack is going to fold. I also think that the player on the button is going to be betting that turn card 100% of the time. It does not exactly mean he has the ace. So I decided to just make a call here instead of going for the immediate raise. And I'm looking for some juicy river cards to make a potential bluff at. Well, the river is definitely an action card, the eight of hearts. So now you guys are thinking, what's he going to bluff to? Well, I actually decide to check as I'm going to play a lot of flushes like this. I'm going to play a lot of trips like this. And I'm going to have a lot of aces that I just go into check calling mode on the river. I like the check raise play more. And the button obliges as he bets $45. Now, I think that he can be either A, bluffing or 
B have a ace with a pretty good kicker. That's about the range I'm putting him on. I think he definitely can have kings, queens, jack. When he raises on the button, I'm really never putting him on eight. I decided to go for a sizing, which is going to fold out every ace, including ace king. So I re-raised to $160. Obviously hoping he has nothing, but if he does have an ace, I think that sizing can make him fold as I will not be bluffing here very often. This is going to be a bet for value majority of the time. Thankfully, he makes the fold and we take down another big pot with some action plays. Wow, boys, we really rallied this one home. Started down 400. Down 400. What up, boys? Um, wrap that session up, as you guys know. And by the way, my reaction was during the mid-session update, I was pretty upset. Uh, started off the session really bad, started off down around $400. Um, found a way to fight back. The action player gave us some action, and we ended up cashing for $925, so $300, $325 profit. We were net positive if you had us both together. I lost $247, um, played that dumb game of regret because I was on the big blind and had to play. But my hold'em game wasn't particularly great either gonna gonna go over the notes make some improvements and we'll be better tomorrow we're excited to keep making the videos uh thanks for the support make sure you come to the hideaway tell them next gym poker sent you we'll catch you in the next one peace